Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We're delighted to be here with you this morning. I'm here with the Life Corps Committee. Young men who are standing behind me are part of that committee. Uh, many of you have taken the Life Corps survey, and we want to express appreciation. You know, on behalf of Dr. Pollock, which is his program, he started in 2011, 2012, and the aim was to maintain a sense of relevancy uh, in our development of spiritual programs so that when we do program, it will be intentional. Uh, it will be meeting, hopefully, your needs and scratching where you're itching, so to speak. Uh, so this morning, what I would like to do is just kind of bring on uh, the president first, everyone, Donovan. Show some love, everyone, please. Thank you, Dr. Weems. Yes, we do want to express our appreciation to the student body. Keelan shared some numbers at our USM cabinet meeting yesterday. I think the numbers were around the low 300s at first, Keelan, and we were able to get that up into the 360s. So we bumped it up by 50. So we want to thank you all um, for, for taking the Life Course survey, as I've expressed many times in the past. This is a survey that's going to shape uh, the spiritual future, how spiritual resources are directed on campus. So it's very important that you all took it. Um, and so, yeah, we, we just also want to let you know that the incentives, uh, we're going to try to do those next, next chapel, correct, Dr. Weems? Yes, I believe next, next, uh, next Thursday, you got AirPod Pros, you got Beats, Buds Pros, uh, iPads, Chapel Credits, Worship Credits, so you don't want to miss that. Be sure to be here on time because we're going to do it at the beginning as well. And then one thing I do want to share, today elections are live, USM Executive Officer elections. I know many of your friends um, are running for office. We got people running for president, vice president, religious vice, so uh, please take out your phones and go to the OU underscore Instagram. If you go to our link tree there, you'll see the link. Um, you also should have received an email from campus groups that's going to invite you to vote today as well. So voting is going to be open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I cannot underscore enough how important it is for you all to vote because we want everybody to have uh, influence on the decision as far as who the next campus leaders are going to be. So please vote today and thank you. Good morning, everyone. Oh, my goodness. You people are dead. Good morning, everyone. Can I give you all some good news this morning? God woke you up this morning, and he started you on your way. And because of that, we should be indeed grateful. As Donovan has already shared a little bit of sad news, I know many of you were coming today expecting some incentives and a host of other things, but next week, we do plan on giving those away. As Donovan has already stated, we ask that you do get here on time. We know many of you, you know, you're, you're on time to go to the Mac and you're on time to go various places. But when it's time to serve God, we ask that you put him first and that you will strive to seek his face. It's, that's one of the main themes that Oakwood has always said, putting God first. And so today, I'm encouraging each of you, if you haven't already taken the Life Course survey, that you still have time to get your name in this drawing. And when you do so, you have a chance to win some gifts. And so I'm asking you all generously today to take five minutes out of your schedule to take the Life Course sur survey. And I promise you, it will indeed pay off in the end. May God bless you and keep you is indeed my prayer. Uh -huh. All right, thank you, Keelan, for that. Just want to sweeten the deal a little bit for you guys with this Life Course survey again. This is a survey that allows for us at Oakwood to better serve your spiritual needs, and so we need you to take it. And what we are doing is for those who do take the survey, we're going to give you 15 worship credits on top of whatever you got. So 15, I see, I see somebody praising up front, 15 worship credits uh, for you to take that survey. All right, so make sure you go ahead and take the Life Course survey. And just by way of announcement, a few other things from the Office of Spiritual Life. Uh, we do want to announce that this summer, uh, June 1 to 12, by the grace of God, we are going to be taking a mission trip to the country of Guatemala for him. We're going to be going for him to Guatemala, so look out for some advertisement on that. Uh, and also, we are at the point of the year where we're going to begin electing our new student leadership, uh, um, worship leadership across campus. So AY leader and, and different positions will be open, so please look out for that. And please let your friends know that they ought to take the survey. Let them know that they need to get here to cha for chapel next week, bright and early, uh, so that we can have a good time in the Lord. Amen?
Good morning, student body. My name is Emil Parker. I'm the director of alumni relations, and I've got two powerful announcements I need you to know. It's all about show you the money, and we want you to vote. First, we're going to talk about the Home Depot Retool Your School. Home Depot Retool Your School. Oh, my. This competition of voting, it's the Super Bowl of HBCU social media. And so we're going to need your help. I'm going to have our president to talk about it, uh, uh, about what we need you to do during 25 days in March, where it starts March 1st. Uh, Donovan, talk to us. All right, thank you. Mike, Mike, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Parker. Um, yeah, I want to underscore the importance of this, this initiative as well, the Home Depot Retool Your School Challenge. Uh, how many of y'all like to win? Raise your hand. You know, you don't like losing. Anytime you try to do some, you know, you're going for the goal. That is Oakwood's goal with this Home Depot Retool Your School Challenge. Um, it, it's a challenge where whoever is going to win the highest prize has to receive the highest number of votes. Um, and so voting is going to open March 1st. I'm sure you all have seen. How many of you saw the survey that USM put out that was developed by myself and Mr. Parker? We were asking, you know, what do you want to see the money go towards? Dorm renovations, some stuff at the MAC, soccer field. You guys see that? Yes. Okay, cool. So we, we went back to the drawing board and we looked at some of the options, Mr. Parker. And so we, we think you guys are going to be satisfied with the adjustments that we've made. That's going to go back out so we can get a better feel um, for how the students think that the funds can be best used on campus and of course is gonna have approval from um, other key key people as well. And so I just really want to underscore the importance. You all can vote multiple times for this. It's gonna start in the middle of spring break, which is gonna mean you're gonna have nothing but time to just vote all day, each and every day, so we can run those votes up. Because I mean, how many times do you get to vote in a competition where you can vote multiple times, right? Usually you can just vote one time. So with this, you can just keep tapping it over and over and over again. And I think that's how people have won in the past, right, Mr. Parker? So we're asking everybody to vote at least 10 times every day when voting is open. Every day we need you, just 10 times. All you got to do is click it. I mean, you, you like 10 people's Instagram pictures every, every day. So I, I feel, right, PJ? PJ's not in his head. He knows, man. Y'all swipe on Instagram all day, one, two hours. I do it myself. So we're just asking, please support this initiative. It's going to directly impact the constituents of Oakwood University. So please take advantage of this opportunity and vote. Thank you. And, and let me also say, not only will you be given a voting platform where you'll select Oakwood and you vote, 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 but you will always be, you will also be given a hashtag that you can post those counts as votes as well. So keep that in mind as uh, uh, also. Uh, Bryce, talk to us. $120,000 is at stake. And President Polly, <laughs> talk to us about what we did in the past. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I just want to take a minute and say, uh, this is really important, uh, students. Retool your school by Home Depot. Beautiful. So just to give you some sense of the impact that this campaign has made. Now, this would have happened before you came. But how many of you have been over to the Unity Pond? Unity Pond? You've been over the Unity Pond? You've seen the barbecue? You've seen the pavilion? Well, all of that was done with the winnings from the Retool Your School. And the students said, we want this area developed. So whenever you see students there having picnics, especially in spring quarter, spring, spring semester, that's a standing reminder of what we can do when we win these competitions. And we've won it three years before. People wonder how we do it, but we know how. So, so, so thank you, everybody. I just wanted to mention that to give you a tangible example of what these dollars can do. Bryce, talk, talk to us about the competition. We need to knock them out. Talk them. Talk okay, okay, okay. As Mr. Parker said, good morning, everyone. If you do not know who I am, my name is Bryce James, and I am happy to serve as your pre-alumni council president for this school year. And just to let you know, we have very, very good competition. We have very good competition. We have the likes of Tuskegee University, South Carolina State University, Virginia State University. We have a lot of schools that we are competing against, but I want to let you know that there is no quit at Oakwood University. I said there is no quit at Oakwood University. We may be a small school, but we have a big heart and it's time that we showed everyone who we truly, truly are. Remember, it begins March 1st, that is uh, spring break, so we are literally just chilling, doing nothing. So take that time, as our President uh, Donovan said, get out, vote, vote 10 times a day. I know it might be a little, 
crazy, but vote 10 times a day and show them that there is no quit at Oakwood. All right. Announcement number two. If you are not familiar with the quality enhancement plan, it comes every five years. This is connected to our accreditation. We need a designer or creative or, or artist to actually create our logo and tagline for our new QEP for the next five years around the subject, academic advising. If you've not received this flyer, if you know you're a creative, you, you wanna show, show us the money. Okay, talk, talk to us, uh, talk to us, uh, uh, Matthew. That's right. We are uh, going to be offering first uh, three prizes. We're going to be offering $1,000 to our first prize winner. We're going to be offering $600 to our second prize winner. And we're also offering $400 to our third prize winner. Again, this is the opportunity to get your idea and uh, displayed across the university for the next five years. Um, we want to make sure that we can present ourselves in a way that makes us look good and uh, look like we have prestige at Oakwood University. <laughs> and uh, that is why we are offering these three prizes. Um, if you are interested, please email your, uh, your interest to em, that's E as in elephant, M as in Mary Parker at oakwood.edu. That's emparker at oakwood.edu. All right. If you are interested, we have flyers. If you raise your hands, we'll make sure you get one of these flyers. Anyone interested? Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, Oakwood. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for waking us up, bringing us here to another chapel. Um, thank you for this month that we can celebrate black history. I pray that as we go throughout the day that everything will go smoothly. Thank you for all you do in our lives. In your name I pray, amen. Good morning, Oakwood. I would ask that you please rise for the, our national anthem.
right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Corey Douglas, one of your chaplains here at Oakland University. It's my responsibility today to welcome you to chapel. I know that may feel a little bit weird since we've already been in the building for about 20 minutes, 20 minutes into our program, but we do want to welcome you to chapel this morning. How are you guys doing this morning? All right, I know it's early in the morning. Trust me, I got four kids, so no matter what time of the day I wake up, it's always early for me. I know how you're feeling, but can you just praise God today for another day of life? Can you praise God for his mercies? Praise God for keeping you sane during the school year so far. Keep, uh, praise God for giving you the energy to work, yes? Well, we are excited that you're here joining us at chapel today. This is a moment for you to take an opportunity to take a break from all the things that you've been doing all week. We know it's not long, it's only an hour, but in this hour, you're able to emote, you're able to give God praise for what's been going on. You're able to come to the throne to receive an encouraging word, so take full advantage of chapel. Well, we know this month we are celebrating Black History Month, and somebody should say amen for the ability to celebrate our history. But not only is it a celebration of our history, but I believe it ought to be a celebration of the present a celebration of what people of color are doing to make an impact on the world as we speak. And somebody ought to call it Black Future Month as well because it's a celebration of how God is leading us so that we can make an uh, impact on the future as well. So I want to welcome you to chapel and I pray that you'll enjoy yourself and you will give God praise for all that he's doing. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know we're a few in numbers. Thank you, BOT. I know we're a few in numbers this morning, but God woke you up this morning, so let me try that again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We've come here to bless his name. This song just says thank you. How many of us are thankful for what God has done in your life? How many of you guys are thankful that God woke you up this morning? How many of you guys are thankful that, that you're still here, that you have people who love you, that we're here to celebrate Black history, and we're here to celebrate black excellence. We're going to sing this medley real quick. We're going to get out of y'all way, but if you know some of the songs, feel free to worship with us. We're still in the house of God. We're still in the place to worship. Is that okay? Can we worship with you guys real quick this morning? Is that okay?
in Oakwood. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, hello. Does anybody know what this is right here? It's a quilt, correct, it's a quilt. And some of your parents or grandparents and aunties, or you may even have a quilt. But the interesting thing about quilts is sometimes they have stories. So your grandmother or their parents would take a piece of fabric. And sometimes those fabrics come from clothing items or dresses that had a story. And they put these quilts together and sometimes they invite their grandkids over to sit down and learn about history. And it's important that we learn about that history because it tells us who we are, it tells us where we come from, and it also tells us where we need to go. So this morning I have some friends from Huntsville Revisited that's gonna come and tell you stories. A lot of them are from local, local stories. And together they form a quilt of stories that tell us about this and it brings us comfort it brings us warmth, and it tells us about our history. So please give our friends your undivided attention as they come and tell us stories about where we come from. Morning, Oakwood. I bring you greetings from my beloved Huntsville, Alabama. Madison County, Alabama, sixth generation Huntsvillian. I come to you today representing Huntsville Revisited. It's a museum that I own here in Huntsville. We share the stories, what I call the front porch experience. I had the good fortune of knowing my great-grandfather, my great-grandmother, my great-grandfather, John Lewis Hampton, Papa, was born in 1862. He died in 1968, Pastor, sharing stories with me of his days serving in the United States military. He was one of General Pershing's pioneers. Today, you will meet General Pershing. I have a group of people who will share stories and give you a snapshot into the lives of individuals who roam these grounds, of individuals who roam the red clay of Alabama. Now understand, when Alabama was, was founded, we were part of the Mississippi Territory. And brought to this land were individuals, men, women, and children, shackled, bound by the chain. And those individuals helped build this community. The, the great city you know today, Huntsville, Alabama, stands on the foundation, on the shoulders of enslaved persons and freed men and women who did great things. Many of you who might not know, we won't have this character portrayed today, but if you've heard of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the founder of that was a native of Huntsville, Alabama, Ottawa Gurley, O.W. Gurley. His family's enslaver was Captain Frank Gurley, who the town of Gurley, Alabama is named in honor of. His roots are in Huntsville, Alabama. So, without further ado, I will give you echoes of the past. Introducing first, Mr. Arlie McCormick, who will represent General Pershing. Good morning. I gotta tell you, I've been dead for 70 years, so I may forget my lines. But my name is General John Joseph Pershing. Some of you may recall, if you studied any history, they refer to me as Black Jack Pershing. And there's some good reason for that. I was born in North Missouri, a little town called McLeod. My parents were farmers. I had seven brothers and sisters. When I graduated from high school, I went to, uh, took a contract with the county to teach freedmen's children how to read, write, 
and cipher. After that, I went to Kirksville, to a university there, where I took the test for admission into West Point, and I passed the test and was accepted at West Point. At West Point, I was not a stellar student. I was middle of my class, a little above, but I was the cadet captain in my senior year. My first assignment was with the 6th Cavalry Buffalo Soldiers in New Mexico. And we traveled in New Mexico, Arizona, California, uh, Oklahoma, chasing wild Indians of the time. We ended up in South Dakota against the Sioux. And at that time, we were near Nebraska, and Mike got an assignment with the University of Nebraska for teaching uh, military, military uh, uh, operations. Then I went to West Point as an instructor, and I had a class, the whole company of young students. I was mean, and if any of you have ever seen a picture of John J. Pershing smiling, I would like to see it. He was never smiling. He was disciplined, he was anxious, he was aggressive, and he, but he treated his troops fairly. Come the American war with the Spanish, he ended up commanding the 10th Cavalry Buffalo Soldiers as a major. They went through several skirmishes and battles before they got to San Juan Hill. One of them was Kettle Hill. The tenth was lined just to the left of the Rough Riders of Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt got a lot of credit for what we achieved in, in Cuba. But the tenth Buffalo soldiers actually saved the Rough Riders from after they had been ambushed en route to San Juan Hill. We saved them. So we charged up Cattle Hill with the, with the Rough Riders on our right. We got up to the top and the troops are so excited and so fired up, they wouldn't stop. And they carried on to San Juan Hill and took that hill. After that hill was taken, I had lost 10 officers of my command, about 20% of my Buffalo soldiers, and we were undermanned anyway because yellow fever and malaria had taken out so many soldiers en route to San Juan Hill. So we were decimated. We needed to recover. Some went to New York. But strangely enough, my commander was Wheeler, a former Confederate general that now wore the Yankee blue. His home is about 20 miles uh, west of Decatur. Good visit if you want to go there. He may have had some influence of the Buffalo Soldiers recovering in Huntsville, Alabama. And that's the reason that the Buffalo Soldiers are a part of our history here, is because of recovering on Cavalry Hill. You may have seen the monument. But in, the, in spite of uh, Teddy Roosevelt getting all the credit for San Juan Hill, he made a statement to the press and to everybody else. He did not believe that any of his soldiers would ever forget the support and the help they received from the Buffalo soldiers in, on that day. 
So I am Major John J. Pershing, and you can call me Blackjack. Thank you very much. Morning, Oakwood University. So proud to be on the campus of this historic uh, university and proud to say I'm a proud father of an Oakwood alum. Can I get an amen? My name is Willie Smith. I'll be representing the 10th Cavalry Buffalo Soldier, my ancestor, William Smith, that was stationed here in Huntsville in 1898, first on Montesano Mountain, then at 10 Cavalry Hill. William Smith was born right here in Huntsville, Alabama, in Mullen Flats, Alabama. The Buffalo Soldiers endured many hardships here in Huntsville, but this is a historic town, and one day the monument on 10 Cavalry Hill, we hope that everybody around the world visited. And uh, quoting from the late Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., I just want to inspire you all. I thank my patron before me. He explained a whole lot about the Buffalo Soldiers. So I'm just going to do a little bit snippet. The Buffalo Soldiers had many duties. They was park rangers. They was uh, protecting the settlers that they traveled from here, from here to there. And they, was, uh, they had many Indian battles. But the greatest battle was one on San Juan Hill. And that's how they got to Huntsville, Alabama, Many of them came down with yellow fever, and they came to Huntsville, Alabama. Many of you may already know that Montesano Mountain is called the Mountain of Hell. But an incident occurred between the black and white soldiers that caused the black soldiers to be moved to 10 Cavalry Hill. So 10 Cavalry Hill will always be special. I had family members live on that 10 Cavalry Hill. And I promise you, every time I went to visit, I would have this eerie feeling in my heart. And doing history research, I found out the reason, the connection to the Buffalo Soldiers. As I leave you with this word, quoting from the great Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., Oakwood University, you don't have no reason not to be successful. You attended one of the greatest universities on God's green earth. But whatever your lot in life, I challenge you this morning to do it well. Even if you call to be a street sweeper, go on out, sweep street like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Handel and Beethoven composed music. Sweep street like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that the host of heaven will pause and say, here live a great street sweeper. Good day. Good morning, students. Great, I know you're a little tired, but that's okay, hanging out with us. Who am I? I am the son of a slave father named Peter Lowry and Ruth Mitchell, a native Cherokee Indian. History tells me that my mother, Ruth, purchased my father's freedom. Who am I? I'm a native of Davidson, Tennessee. Born between 1830 and 1832 on December the 8th. I am the son of a single parent. My mother died when I was eight years old. Who am I? My father and I were free Negroes who did not escape racism uh, because we were free. Who am I? I am a former student of the pastor, Reverend Tolbert Fanning. He taught my father and I while my dad was a janitor at the Franklin College in Tennessee. I am a witness along with many other uh, freed uh, Negroes uh, that had to leave uh, our, uh, our, their own home because of the uprising by poor whites and immigrants who burned down black businesses and closed the school for black children. Other free Negroes and I were, had to escape to Canada because we feared for our lives because of the racial riot. 
Who am I? I am a husband married to Adora Robinson of Huntsville, Alabama. I am a father of two daughters, Anna and Ruth. I am a pastor, chaplain, teacher, church planner, editor of the National Freeman newspaper in Huntsville, Alabama, 1879. Business owners, establish, uh, I established the Industrial Academy and SRM, Larry Industrial Silk Culture and Manufacturing Company in Huntsville, Alabama. I am a practicing attorney who was admitted to the bar of the United States Supreme Court with the help of a white female lawyer by the name of Susan Belva Lockwood. I was the fifth black person and the first black southerner, if you would, the first black southerner to actually uh, be uh, plead a case before the Supreme Court, uh, before the Supreme Court. Who am I? I am Samuel Larry who was not a native of Huntsville, Alabama, but my wife, Adora, was, so were my daughter. And my daughter, uh, Ruth, is buried in the Glenwood Cemetery. Good morning, Oakwood family. My name is Beverly Thornton. I was born in Virginia in 1845. My parents, Paul and Mary Foxwell Thornton, were also born there. I enlisted in K Troop of the 10th Cavalry. My primary role at first was an Army cook. I also graduated from Hampton University in 1883. Even though my first primary occupation was Army cook, I'm a sharpshooter and spent two years in the Philippines. I'm also an author. I contributed an article, Economy, to the Colored American in 1905. I also wrote an article on race consciousness. In 1904, I married Sally Conley at the home of Pascal Conley in Huntsville, Alabama. Pascal was her brother and the Buffalo soldier that established the 10th Calvary encampment on what is now the site of Calvary Hill School at 2800 Popular Avenue, where the Buffalo Soldier Monument is also located. If you haven't been by to see that, you need to go. Sally was a 10th Calvary Army nurse. She and I had one daughter, Jessie, who later married Zan Suggs. Sally's parents are Pascal and Mary Steger Conley. She was born in 1864, right here in Huntsville, Alabama. In 1898, she started her career as an Army nurse. That's how we met. During that time, the yellow fever and typhoid academics were running rampant in Cuba. Surgeon General Stenberg sought female immunes women who could survive the diseases. On July 13th, 1898, many black nurses, which numbered about 80, served during the Spanish-American War. We are proud to say Sally was one of them. We later moved to Winooski, Vermont, became active community leaders. I died in Winooski in 1920 and am buried in Lakeview Cemetery on North Avenue there. Sally died in 1931 at age 66. And guess what? We both have finally come back home to share our story with you. Freedom, oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me, over me. And before I be a slave, I be resting in my grave and go home with my Lord and be free. Good morning. Didn't know you were there. My name's Amy Butcher, and I'm on my way to town. 
but I do have a few minutes to talk with you. My year is 1819. Do you know what was happening here in 1819? Anybody? The Alabama Territory was just about to become the 22nd state. Everybody in Huntsville was so excited because the Constitutional Convention is going to be held here. That's when laws are made. And I tell you, I'm paying close attention because I need laws. I need justice. You see, in 1819, most people who looked like me were enslaved. That means that they were held against their will and they worked, forced to work, mind you, for no pay. But me, did you think I'd always been enslaved? Uh-uh, no, sir. I tell you, I was born free in Prince George County, Virginia. That's right. About four years ago, a man came to Virginia and he tried to enslave me and my daughter Katie. I wasn't going to have that, I tell you. You know what I did? I marched myself down to the courthouse in Richmond, Virginia, and I proved my case that my mother was an American Indian and I was born free. Well, right then and there, that judge ruled in my favor and gave me a piece of paper showing that me and my daughter Katie was free. We went home that day. And mind you, about two weeks later, James Dowell came to Virginia. He kidnapped me and my Katie and brought us here to Huntsville, Alabama. That James Dowell, he's a mean man. He's cruel. He's still holding me against my will. And my daughter Katie, he sold her away from me. We do hear from her every now and then. They tell me my daughter Katie got babies now. My grandbabies. We ought to be free, shouldn't we, son? Yes, we ought to be free. And I tell you, they don't know it now but I'm going to make sure that my family is free. I'm going to, oh, it's imperative that I make sure my family is free. This injustice is not right, is it? I must persevere. Forgive me. Forgive me. I let my passion get away with me. There are some good people here in Huntsville who support me, but then there's some here who rather see me dead. So I have to be mighty careful and not push too hard, not just for me, but for my Kate and my grandbabies too. But I tell you, I know how to fight. I have my letter here from Richmond, Virginia, proving that me and my Katie free. My grandchildren, they don't know it. They don't even know me. But grandma fighting hard for them. I'm fighting that they be free. And I tell you, they said, God helps those who help themselves. And I believe with prayer and the fact that I know how to fight. We will be free. <laughs> it took me a while. Five years. February 1824. A jury of good and lawful men here in Madison County they found that me, my Katie, and my grandchildren, we're free. We're free. We're free. My name is Amy Butcher.
Can you say my name with me? Amy Butcher. I know how to fight for injustice. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me, over me. And before I be a slave, I be resting in my grave and go home with my Lord and be free. If you guys can do me a favor and clap for all of our performers for today. Just let you guys know that Huntsville has a lot of rich, rich heritage. And if you're ever on Facebook, I want you to look up Huntsville Revisited. Huntsville Revisited. And you'll learn so much about Huntsville, Alabama. Um, there's a lot more that could have been said today but wasn't. Um, just to give you a few, there is a guy who was a ward when he went to the World's Fair. Black guy, World's Fair, and had award-winning silk. Silkworms. If you know, silkworms make silk. Um, so there's so much history, and we just want to encourage you guys, while you're here in Huntsville, to make sure. Also, afterwards, um, the participants will be down front if you have some additional questions. Um, there's also a museum called Huntsville Revisited that you should go and visit. Um, but at this time, we're going to have closing prayer. But I want to thank everybody for giving your undivided attention. Hello, Oakwood. Um, I'm just going to close the prayer real quick so everybody bow their heads, please. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for giving these people um, the ability to speak to us. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for educating us about our past because without our past, it is hard to build a present. And without building a present, a current present, it is even harder to build a future. So thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. Help us to take this information and to say it to someone else. And I pray that we spread your kindness and we try to be a little bit more like you. Amen. Just one quick announcement. Um, one of our performers is an author and she has written some books about the Huntsville, I mean, excuse me, the Scottsboro Boys. Um, there is another book about people in Decatur. Um, if you're interested, come down front. Um, we're going to be purchasing some books also to give away. Um, but if you're interested in reading some of those books, I'm currently reading one of them. Very good stories. Once again, it's learning our history. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>